Okay, um, we're going to look at the fundamental theorem of calculus and use applications to do so. Alrighty, so you should have this worksheet in front of you. And what we're told is that um, this graph represents f, f of t. And we are trying to find, we're given that g of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x of f of t dt. Okay? And this graph is f of x, or f of t. So our first thing they want us to find is g of 1. Well, we can write that as g of 1 is equal to the integral from 1 to 1 of f of t dt. Because I'm just evaluating this at 1. So every place I see x, I'm going to replace it with 1. So from our properties, we know the integral from 1 to 1 is simply 0. Okay, for the next one, g of 3 is equal to the integral from 1 to 3 of f of t. So if I'm integrating from 1 to 3, that would be this um, triangle, and it's going to be negative because it's underneath the y-axis. So to find the area of this triangle, I'm going to use 1 half the base times the height. Now the base of that triangle is 2, and the height of that triangle is negative 1 or 1, so that my area of that triangle is negative 1. Uh, the next thing that we're asked to find, okay, so the next thing that we're asked to find is g of negative 1. So g of negative 1 is going to be the integral from 1 to negative 1 of f of t. Okay, so if I'm going from 1 to negative 1, because I'm going from right to left, that area, I can also write this area because we always want the smaller one to be at the bottom, so it would be negative, going from negative 1 to 1 of f of t dt. So going from negative 1 to 1 is this quarter of a semicircle. So that would be um, 1 fourth, or it's, it's a quarter of a circle, 1 fourth pi, and the radius of this semicircle is 2. So this would be um, Oh, it's pi r squared, sorry. It's pi r squared. So that would be pi, and it would be negative pi, because we are going from negative 1 to 1, but I had to flip it, so I'd take the inverse. So it would be negative pi. Okay? So in this next one, they ask us to find all values of x at which g has a local minimum. So we're looking for a minimum of g. So we recall from unit 3 that if I want to find out where g is the minimum, I have to look at g prime of x. And I have to look at where g prime of x goes from negative to positive. All right, so how do I find g prime of x? Well, if g of x, so I would take the derivative of g of x. So the derivative of g of x is equal to the derivative of the integral of 1 minus x, f of t, dt. And we already know from the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is an x, sorry, that's an x. From the fundamental theorem of calculus, since this x and this x are the same, I have a constant in the bottom integral. Then the integral of this is simply f of x. Okay? So I have to look at this, and this graph is f of x. This is f of x, y equals f of x. So I have to look and see when does this graph go from uh, negative to positive. And that happens at x equals 3. So we have a local minimum at x equals 3 because the graph went from negative to positive. 
Okay. I was looking to see what I had done earlier, but I think that's all we need to know for that. And so now we want to write an equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1. And we're writing the equation of the tangent line, I'm assuming, for g of x. Oh, yes, the graph of g. So again, to find the equation of the tangent line, I need y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Well, m is the derivative. So to find m, m is the derivative of this. Let's see, let's see, which is simply f of x, and I want to know f of negative 1. So looking at my graph, f of negative 1 is 2. So that is the slope. For the point, so to write the equation, I need y and y1, where x1 is negative 1. I have already found, did I find g of negative 1? Yes. In the previous slide, I found that g of negative 1 is negative pi. So that's my y value. So I have y plus pi is equal to 2 times x plus 1 because I, my point ended up being negative 1, negative pi. Okay? I'm just checking my answers as I go because I haven't done this problem in a while. All righty. And then the last one, well, not the last one, C, F, says find the x-coordinate of each inflection, of each point of inflection. So an inflection point is where the second derivative goes from positive to negative. So recall that g prime of x, from the last slide, g prime of x is equal to f of x. So g double prime of x is going to equal to f prime of x, okay? So I need to figure out on this graph, when, does my, when is my derivative zero or undefined? So here my, zero, my derivative is zero at negative one, so my critical point of g uh, prime are negative one, one, no, not one. Well, one is undefined, and at two, it's undefined. So both of these are undefined. So I have to determine, did I go from positive, did the second derivative go from positive to negative? Where the second derivative went from positive to negative at negative one, because the second derivative is positive here, and then it becomes negative. At one, um, the second derivative is negative and it remains negative. So one is not going to be a critical point. At 2, the second derivative went from uh, negative to positive because my slopes went from negative, from decreasing to increasing. So my uh, points of inflection are going to be x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. Okay? Last question. And that is to find the range. Now, to find the range, um, we have to find the maximum value of g of x. So remember, g of x is the area, re is represented by the area under the curve starting at 1. So I need to find the maximum area and the, the minimum area. So the maximum area for this, well, the minimum area is going to be at a negative point. So when I go from 1, to negative 3, I think that's going to give me my minimum point. So g of negative 3 would be the integral from 1 to negative 3 of f of t. Or I could write that as negative the integral from negative 3 to 1 of f of t dt. And so the least, uh, so that value, would, is that's the um, area of the semicircle. So that's going to be um, 2, sorry, pi r squared over 2. 
So that's pi r squared over 2. And the, we said before that the radius is 4. So that's going to be uh, 4 over 2, 2 pi. And it's negative because it's negative here. So negative 2 pi is going to be the smallest value that that can be. Now, what is going to be the maximum value of this? So remember, the maximum value is where the graph goes from positive to negative. So, which means I have to look at when is the, the first derivative, when is f of x going from a negative to a positive? And that would be at 3. So, f of 1, so the integral from 1 to 3 um, would be, we've already figured that out, the integral from 1 to 3, we figured that out in uh, the first one, and that was, I can't remember what it was, it's 1 half, 1 half times 2 times 1, so it's 1. But remember, we have to check endpoints. So that endpoint is at 4. So we also have to look at the integral from 1 to 4 of f of t. So the integral from 1 to 4, and again, this area was negative, so that would be negative 1 plus, um, what is that, 1 half times 1 times 1. So that is one half. So the maximum is going to be the integral from from one to four would be one half plus negative one, which is negative one half. So the maximum, the range of that, the minimum is negative two pi, and the maximum is negative one half. Okay? Because we have to check the endpoints. We always have to check endpoints. Okay? All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, there are some free response questions that you're going to do. Uh, you will get a worksheet for the free response, and I'm also going to do a few of the problems from the free response as well, um, in case you didn't get this. So uh, watch the next video if you still need help. I would say first try it, and then after you've tried it, then watch the video. All right, have a good afternoon.